Hello, I'm Rob Westervelt, Editor-in-Chief of IHS Chemical Week, welcoming you to the 2014 IHS Chemical World Petrochemical Conference. And I'm delighted to have with me Ignatius Torres, Chief Executive of Tricon Energy. Ignatius, thanks for joining us. Rob, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here speaking uh, to you a little bit, and also more important to be a sponsor and partner with IWPC. This is the first year that we associate it. We expect to be the first of many, many years to come. And it's, again, it's an honor for us to be part of this organization. Great. Well, thanks for your support, and thanks for participating here. Um, first question, uh, clearly a big theme of the conference uh, will be the impact that unconventional energy and shale has had on the cost, competitive cost position in the U.S. It's obviously led to a flurry of cracker announcements. Um, but I think you have a, uh, you're well positioned to, to give an assessment of how that's impacting the supply chain and distribution. And um, what impact do you see that have, having going forward on the chemical supply chain in the U.S.? I'm, I'm not sure I'm an expert. And uh, uh, one, of the, one of the things that we, are, we are have to still to assess is how much of the expansions that has been announced is going to happen. Uh, every time I run the WPC conference, there is a chain of new events, of sorry, of new announcements happening, and we expect some of them to happen mm -hmm. still during this week. Nonetheless, whatever, if it's uh, 12, 14, 18, it's going to be a huge amount of expansions happening that is going to, is going to represent an interesting challenge in terms of uh, supply chain. The first, the first challenge is going to be human resources. Uh, uh, people is, is becoming uh, special engineers. Uh, today, an engineer, to get an engineer is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. To get time on an engineer firm is very complicated. A couple of the announcements has been postponed because, because uh, lack of engineer uh, availability on engineer firms. The second point is going to be on the construction per se. We are not an expert since we are a trading commercial marketing company. We are not expert in the construction, but we hear each one of our partners having postponed and delays on, on the commercial change, on the, on the construction part. And the last part, the one that we know very well, is of course the logistics. Uh, 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 there's going to be a major change on the on the flow of products in the next uh, in the next uh, decade or maybe two decades, and the logistics has to be totally reorganized with certain challenge like is the fact that in, when you do shipments in the U.S. Yeah. you need to have John Sacked and you need to have to have uh, U.S. assets. And if, if you look at things like bulk liquid trade, and I think you have a big position on products like caustic soda, um, how do you see that market developing over the next ten years, and and what investments uh, need to be made, and what should you know your, your your suppliers and your customers be aware. That's that's going to be a, an interesting uh, an interesting uh, uh, scenario. Uh, when you're talking about building an ethylene cracker, you are talking in world scale economies and, and the production cost or building cost of an, on an ethylene cracker. I guess is very similar. I'm not an expert. But I will guess it's very similar to build it here from a construction cost in South America in Far East. When you're building uh, U.S. assets for transportation and logistics, uh, you have to be building them in the U.S. And the cost, for example, to build an ocean-going barge for 200,000 barrels will cost you today something like $80 million. The same barge or the same vessel, if it was built in, in Korea or in China uh, shipyards, will cost you <clears throat> maybe around $25, $30 million. There is a little bit of a vertigo right now from the logistic providers in the U.S., if the, if the requirement for those assets to be built is really going to be there in the long yeah. term. But pretty much everyone is, is counting, is betting that it's, it's going to be that development of liquid chemicals, not only caustic soda, but methanol, yeah. MEG, yeah. styrene monomer, uh, uh, that is going to have to be shipped on US, on US assets, not only vessels, but also rail cars. And even so, there is not yet been any major investment. Pretty much all the ship, all the ship, all the logistic providers are about to decide to make those expansions. Okay, is there anything that logistics suppliers could, or providers rather can do to mitigate the risks there related to cost and possibly delays on their? their own business? Uh, it's, it's very little Very yeah. little you can do to mitigate the cost. It's pretty much you can be, you can, you can make, you can have to, to reassure that your market yeah. is going to be in the domestic market. Uh, uh, rail cars is going to play an important yeah. role within the domestic market. Uh, vessels are going to play an important role. The best way, the best thing you can do to minimize is, is size. Logistics usually by size, yeah. you, you tend to, uh, you tend to uh, diminish your cost and diminish your risk. But uh, <clears throat> I don't think it's a, very, it's a very huge risk. It's not a very large risk. It's a very well uh, uh, calculated risk in the sense that 
if those plants are going to be built, those plants will have to sell the products. Yeah. And, and the U.S., at the, the same boom that we see in the U.S. as a producer of chemicals and petrochemicals, we also want to see as a consumer of chemicals and petrochemicals. The fact that we have very competitive shell gas not only makes us competitive in, 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 in chemicals, but also makes us competitive in power. So we expect a huge increase on consumption of those chemicals. So I think it's a very, very safe bet to, to say that uh, you have to invest in logistics, uh, you have to pay the cost of the domestic logistics, which yeah. is... is, is, is that's the only way to enter it, true, and yeah. and I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a very uh, very uh, good and a very uh, very safe bet for the future for these players. Okay, what moves and investments is Tricom making to, to position itself for this? coming wave? That's, that's a good question. Uh, when we started the company 18 years ago, we started as a traditional yeah. trading company. Uh, arbitrage was the main, the main tool that we used yeah. to play, just you know, buying a vessel in the US government, 5,000 tons, putting logistics, putting finance, putting a margin and selling CFR into China, or into India, into Australia. The, uh, the, one of the changes that is happening with these new, with these new investments and the fact that the, the US, or the chemical world is going to become America-centric from, from Asia-centric is going to become U.S.-centric, is that the, the, the largest producers in the U.S. have a large tradition of marketing. They know the markets yeah. very well. They have presence around the world. They have their offices. So they are not looking for a trader who can take 10,000 tons, put $10, and sell the 10,000 tons into China. They are looking for people that can bring to them the market that they cannot achieve by themselves, either because it's too small of a size, either because it's a financial risk, it's a credit risk, either because it's a bit of a challenge, uh, uh, um, a logistic challenge. So what the producers we think are going to be looking for the next five, 10 years, the US producers, the, the more historical, traditional producers, is people that can really help them in the deep marketing of the products more than a conventional yeah. trader. So Tricon is, is expanding around the world. We, uh, we, open, we are opening, uh, we, today we have 30 offices. We open four offices in Africa in the last two years. We have today 12 offices in Latin America, uh, which we opened in the last four years. Uh, and we are not only focused on, 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 uh, on what traditional we call emerging markets, but we're also focusing in what we call you know, potential market for U.S. So for example, we just decided to, in the past, we used to have the hub for the European market. It used to be based on Turkey. We, we decided to create a second hub for European market based in London. Uh, even so, the Northwest European market was not a traditional market for, for marketing of, of U.S. goods. We think that in the next uh, 5, 10, 15 years, it will be a fantastic market. So we, we created a hub in London now. We have moved three commercial people from Houston to London in the last few, in few months. And we expect to expand much more the Northwest European market. So we are expanding on those areas that we believe that the U.S. will have a very strong presence in the future. Okay. And final question. You mentioned the, the investment in London to position yourself in Northwest Europe. Do you see product flows globally changing significantly as a result of this? Where is, this, where is all this product going to go? The, again, a lot of announcements have been made, but they haven't been built. So okay. we're talking in the next uh, three yep. to five years is going to happen. We have, of course, Braskem in Mexico as, as the first one. Then we have a huge one, even so it's not U.S., which is Sadara in the in, uh, in, uh, Middle East. Uh, we, we think Europe is going to be a strong partner for, for, yep. uh, for U.S. commodities, for U.S. petrochemicals and chemicals in uh, Northwest Europe, unfortunately, unfortunately in the sense that it means that at the, same, at the same token that every U.S. producer today is thinking about expansion, pretty much every European producer today is unfortunately thinking about shutting it's down. Uh, so is the, is the event, is the, is the, is the, is the reverse event. So, but we think that definitely Europe is going to be a strong partner for the U.S. West Africa has got another strong partner, and Latin America. Those three markets are going to be back, which always used to be U.S. predominant presence. Yeah. They got lost a lot of it to, to, to Asia, Middle East. Uh, we think the U.S. is going to get back. And then the other market is the U.S. East Coast. U.S. East Coast because logistics, John's Act was very challenging. Uh, and we think now the U.S. is going to be so competitive that every uh, U.S. producer, U.S. consumer will like to, to team up themselves again with the U.S. producers. Right. Well, thanks, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. Yep. It's a pleasure.